Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, where the unbeaten sensation from Cincinnati, Ohio, Aaron Pryor, puts his WBA junior welterweight crown on the line against the legendary Alexis Arguello. Hello again, everyone. I'm Chris Shankle. And as you saw in our opening, their first meeting was a classic. And generally, rematches of great fights over the years have never matched the excitement and drama of the original bout. But the two men of the ring have promised that this rematch will be even more exciting, more thrilling, if that's possible. When he knocked out Alexis Arguello last November, that man, Aaron Pryor, retained his WBA title. He remained unbeaten. He scored his 31st knockout in 33 fights. But most importantly, he established himself as one of the great champions active in the ring today. Aaron is a fighter with speed, power, stamina, and a tremendous heart. There are some questions. Is he too overconfident? Did he train enough? Did the chaos surrounding his training camp, primarily the constant shifting of trainers before this fight, allow him to concentrate on his preparation? There are questions, too, about the great Alexis Arguello as well. You're looking at him right now. Most people feel he's in the best shape possible at this stage of his career. But at age 31, after reported 83 pro fights, how much does he have left? And mentally, has he been able to erase the memory of the terrible beating he took in the first fight? Has this great champion, like so many others, stayed around one fight too long? He says, win or lose, this is his last fight. And he desperately wants to become the first man in boxing history to win four world titles. And let's look at the tail of the tape. Only one pound separates him in the weight department. Age, prior, an advantage of four years. Height, Arguello, three inches taller. Reach, Arguello, two inches longer. But what doesn't show on the tail of the tape is experience and length of time of throwing punches and absorbing them. Alexis Arguello has been a professional eight years longer than prior. Has had a total of 50 more professional fights. Time always takes its toll. Now the referee for this fight is Richard Steele of Las Vegas. He will not have a voice in the scoring, which will be done by Chuck Menker of Las Vegas, Jimmy Rondo of Seattle, and Dr. James Jen Kim of Los Angeles. Championship fights not only draw large crowds, but celebrities as well. Like here in Las Vegas, actor Jack Nicholson. Oscar winner Gene Hackman enjoys fights, as does the native of Philadelphia, funny man David Brenner. From the world of football, formerly acting now, Big John Matuzak. And next to him, a great champion from Detroit, Thomas Hearns. And there's Tony Danza out of Brooklyn. Pretty fair middleweight before he headed for Hollywood in an acting career. One of my all-time favorites, great showman, Wayne Newton. And Mr. Music Man, Paul Anka. And the star of ABC's Benson, Robert Guillaume. And here in Las Vegas, the celebrities along with the capacity crowd getting ready for round one. And with that sound, this championship bout is underway and as usual prior in the white trunks. The champion, the junior welterweight champion, comes out fast, trying to smother the much taller Alexis Arguello. Unloading early, Aaron Pryor. WBA rules, 10-point must, three judges. And Alexi Arguello is not standing for any of the smothering. Beautifully throwing combinations. Alexis Arguello on Blue. Three inches taller. Let's see how loose he can be. And on his trunks with the American flag. Down goes Arguello. He caught a sneak right hand. And his eyes are light with red light wheels. Time. Bay take its toll right tonight in the fight of November. Here's the mandatory eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect for this WBA championship fight. We're in the first round. One knockdown already. Arguello fighting back. Lots of time left in this round. Arguello got caught with a little right chop again. Pryor keeps throwing lefts, rights, combinations. Arguello unwisely is standing toe-to-toe. -to -toe. No lateral movement whatsoever, trying to stay away from the right hand. Arguello, as he did in their first meeting, a very, very low blow. There's a left hook that has shaken up Arguello. A left hook by Pryor and White. Perpetual motion, Pryor. Pryor, 33 fights, 33 wins, 31 knockouts. 
eighth title defense, a string of 25 knockouts. Arguello here in the first round after being knocked down and taking the mandatory eight count is trying to show his courage, but he's taking too many prior right hands. Very little defense. There's another right, another right from outside. Arguello in the first round trying to fight back is wild with his punches, cannot find a slipping, moving target in prior. Richard Steele, big responsibility on his shoulders. He is the only man that can actually officially stop a fight. He can take the advice from the physician who is Dr. Donald Romeo. We're inside the final 30 seconds of round one. Prior, the champion let Arguello get off the hook in the first round. Arguello's condition, superb condition showing and taking the punch. About five seconds left in round one. And breathing a little heavily was Aaron Pryor. Alexis Arguello, 31 years of age, a 16-year professional career, survived a knockdown in the first round. And there is Lupe Sanchez, his new trainer, Sanchez of Lupino Cuevas fame. And here is the knockdown, setting it up with a left hand, another one, and then the right hand, hitting the nose and the front part of the chin and on the seat of the pants on the deck, Alexis Arguello. Richard Steele gave him the mandatory eight count. It was the only knockdown in round one. Sanchez in Spanish talking to the three-time world champion in his many weight divisions, trying to make history to become the only four title holder. Here's another look from another angle. There is the punch. It was an overhand right. Pryor throws him from every angle. There he is, unmarked. Taking the deep breath prior coming out. Arguello in the second round, scheduled for 15. Very few people, including Pryor, do not think it will go 15 rounds. The last one went one minute and six seconds of the 14th round in Miami 10 months ago. Many thought that Arguello in the blue trunks would change his style. Jab a little more, have much more movement. But in that first round, he again toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and he's doing it right now. Not getting away from the pressure, pressure champion, Pryor. You probably saw Arguello's sneak right hand. Arguello trying to the left hook, but even though he's got his dukes up, they are too wide apart, and he gets hit straight away in the face. Good left hook by Arguello. Pryor in a little bit of trouble right here. Confused him, that left hook. First time backing up. Pryor now backing away from Arguello. The right hand just missed. Partially blocked. A left hook short of its mark. Round two. You just joined us. Arguello, the three-time champion in his many weight divisions, took a mandatory eight count in the first round. He got hit with a right hand, a sizzler from the champion Pryor in white. Not, not a lot of science in this particular rematch. Both are missing. Their timing is way off. Neither fighter has really worked to the body. I'm surprised that Arguello hasn't gone to the midsection. Really headhunting here in the second round. Beautiful snapping away of that right hand thrown by Arguello, by Pryor. That's Pryor's defense. Head movement, ducking, slipping punches, trying to sneak in another right hand lead was Pryor missing. That left hook partially landing. This has been a bout in the center of the ring. The same hot pace that happened 10 months ago in Miami. Pryor shaken up again. Starting to back away, but still throwing the left jabs, keeping Arguello off balance. And Pryor continuing to try to land the right-hand lead. We're in the final 30 seconds of round two. A 
Ron Canny is prior in his movements, whether he misses or lands. And, no, that was not as a result of a punch. Almost tripped over himself, his white shoes and gold tassels on them. The bell in a moment. into round three of this junior welterweight championship fight. Friar in the white trucks at 140 pounds. Arguello in blue at 139. Rematch. Friar again backing up. He did not do that in the first round when he decked Arguello. Unbelievable body movement by the much shorter champion Friar. with his left hand is often low, below the belt. Just great action. Uh, it's a windmill, a uh, buzzsaw, dryer. And our quail just keeps coming. But wisely, watch prior. There is movement on the part of prior. Circling right and left. Right now he's circling into... Arguello's right hand, which has stiffened 63 opponents. There's tremendous heat here in Las Vegas. And with the television lights, it has to be about 95 degrees. More than normal humidity in Las Vegas. I talked at the beginning about prior shifting trainers before this championship bout. Well, in November versus Arguello, it was Panama Lewis, who later was suspended for life because he was allegedly charged with tampering with the gloves of his fighter on a New York fight card. Prior then beckoned Richie Giacchetti, only to then change to Angelo Dundee. Well, that deal fell through, so enter Detroit's famous trainer, Emmanuel Stewart. Manuel coming into Las Vegas only 10 days ago. Arguello, too, since their first meeting, changed trainers. Arguello, after their first meeting, accused veteran trainer Eddie Futch of overtraining him in his loss to Pryor. Arguello, the great gentleman he is, later apologized. But then went to Mexico City and hired Lupe Sanchez. A lot of shoulder movement, hand movement. That was a glancing right hand by Arguello. Arguello trying to throw more left hooks. Pryor looking at the crowd and not at the punches. He snapped away from a sizzling right hand. Arguello now turning on the power, and Pryor is just smiling. Bill Miller, the agent in the corner for Arguello, tells Arguello to keep moving forward. We have about five seconds left in this third round. You see a lot of Vaseline on the face of Aaron Pryor. His cornermen are trying to cushion the impact of Arguello's blows, making them slide off rather than hit with full impact. Referee Richard Steele has to decide when they put on too much. Lupe Sanchez undoubtedly told Arguello after being successful in the last round with body punches to keep going there. Punch to the body and then the head will go. But Pryor now on his biggest attack. And with it, he is down again, a left hook. This is the fourth round. Five, six, now taking the mandatory eight count. Three knockdown rule is in effect, WBA rules. You cannot be saved by the bell except the 15th round. And Pryor comes right back with a beautiful right hand. He's trying to finish it all here in the fourth round. Alexis Arguello doesn't know how to clinch. In his long career, he's always had the firepower and skill and speed not to have to do it, but now he is confused. 31 years, 83 fights, 16 years of professional. And there he's hurt again, his knees buckled. 
Arguello being hit at will now with sneak right hands. His legs are like spaghetti, but giving it all he has here in the fourth round as we're approaching the halfway point of the round. Will Pryor punch himself out. He's just pushing the punches now. But maybe a push would knock Arguello down, but he comes back with a right hand. Arguello. He said he would fight with his last blood. Win, lose, or draw, he was going to retire after this bout. Well, we'll see. Watching closely is Richard Steele, the referee. Pryor is tired. Who wouldn't be after throwing that many punches and knocking your man down for the second time in the bout? And then his getting up. Arm weary, the champion, undefeated from Cincinnati, Ohio. That one minute rest is going to be so important for both of them. Especially Arguello, because when you get knocked down, but look at that courage. Nicaraguan, who survived the 72 earthquake, 79 revolution, left that country. His home now is the United States. We got five seconds, and they'll get that one minute rest here in Las Vegas. Arguello's not sure where he is. Oscar Siri, his longtime assistant trainer, beckons him back to his corner. On the far side as we look on. With his back to us, that is Lupe Sanchez. Trying to freshen up a battered junior welterweight, Arguello. Here's the knockdown, set it up with a good right hand. Pryor looking almost awkward, but he gets the job done. There's the left hook. Another one, a right hand, and a solid left to the face, the sight of the face, Arguello, down for the second time in this bout. From another angle, it's that non-stop punching. Smothering the opponent, confusing him. Arguello unable to duck the punches from the left and right side of the champion prior. Round five. Again, tons of Vaseline on the face of Aaron Pryor. Time. Okay. And finally, Richard Steele taking a lot of that excess Vaseline. It's a little trick that can be used. But a good referee that notices it. Pryor's uncanny with his timing. He could snap away from those Arguello right-hand leads. are a pair of junior welterweight eye watchers looking each other in the eye. Arguello backing up now. We're in the fifth round. Big round for Pryor in the last. After Arguello had two strong rounds in round two and three. It is hot here in Las Vegas. Long right hand, just short of the mark. Good right hand by Arguello. Their first meeting about that ended at 106 of the 14th round. Arguello in blue to everything in his bag of tricks. Pryor just wouldn't go down. That got stronger. Condition really going to tell here very soon as we're in the fifth round. Pryor, the champion in white, unmarked. He has already scored two knockdowns in this championship bout. Pace slowing now here in the fifth. Fair left hand, stiff jab by Arguello. There's a left hook to the body, which grazed across at the belt line. Arguello head hunting. Imagine that, knock 
knocked down twice and still coming forward. knocked senseless in Miami, was spent, crushed eight for about four minutes after the stopping. Here he is fighting back. He'll get a rest along with Pryor. <laughs> Richard Steele bringing them together in the middle of the ring for round six of the scheduled 15-round bout. Arguello in blue, the challenger for the second time has been knocked down twice in the first round and the fourth round. Arguello with two fights under his belt since the beating he took in Miami 10 months ago by Pryor. Pryor has fought once, also in April, three-round knockout over Sang Hyung Kim. Arguello now doing a little more movement. had a lot of movement because he's been pretty much of a flat-footed fighter because he's trying to get a lot of punching power and leverage. And this has been a center of the ring bout. Well, badly missing with a left hook. Opening his mouth, adjusting the mouthpiece, perhaps gasping for air. On his trunks ahead of time. Go home. They both continue to be headhunters. Stiff left jab. There was that sneak right hand again. The only reason it didn't land, Arguello was out of range. He did not snap away or try to throw up a defense for it. His reflexes are not what they were. Beautifully set. Now jabbing a lot, just flicking it out to distract Arguello. Through rounds four, they threw a lot of punches, both fighters. And often, missed punches are more tiring than those that land. And both have missed, as you've seen. Punches are not crisp here in the sixth round. Timing really off. That time Arguello absorbed a good right hand thrown by Pryor. Arguello digging a tremendous left hook near the kidney of Pryor. Right and now we move to round seven. Round six was a sort of a pace round for both junior welterweights. Arguello and Blue at 139, Pryor and White 140 pounds. Well, going to the jab now, his first one, you saw it land, a really snap ahead of Pryor. In his long career, Arguello has been susceptible to left hooks. Knocked down uh, the second time by a solid left hook thrown by Pryor and White. The heat is tremendous, the pace of the first four rounds tore it. A lot of jabbing now, doing some measuring. Each 140 pounder. There was a beautiful uppercut by Arguello. The ease with which he landed that uppercut, he should go to it more.
jabs by the challenger, Arguello. Fryer getting near the ropes now. Fryer realizes that he allowed Arguello twice to get off the hook. Scoring two knockdowns in the first and again in the fourth round. Good body punch by Arguello. Complaining to the referee that it was low. A little bit low. And he follows up those right hands by the right hand by Pryor. Pryor in their first meeting talked a lot, but he's taking all of the best shots by Arguello, which has to be frustrating. Downright discouraging for Arguello. They both tried to end it all. seconds of round seven. the halfway point. Pace was toward in the first couple of rounds and now it picks up in the eighth. The last few rounds it was Arguello's pace. Arguello is a man that has gone 15 rounds three times. Now coming on here in the eighth round and it's a round that many picked the fight would end. never had to go the WBA championship distance of 15 rounds. He's going 10 rounds once, 12 rounds once, and into a minute and six seconds of the 14th round against Arguello in November. Perhaps warned of a butt by Richard Steele, the referee, prior. Both landing, scoring punches, three judges looking on. Ken, Jimmy Rondo, and Chuck Minker. Ten-point must scoring. Our game started fast, but now he's allowing his left hand to drop down at his hip, and he's being caught with right hand. But he comes back. The player in trouble now. Back in the far corner. Another low blow. And he is smiling at one of the judges now. And Richard still warms our play on low punches. In this eighth round, taken away from Arguello. And if it goes the distance, that could be costly. One point taken away. Arguello, low punches. And the debris starts coming into the ring here. This capacity crowd in the outdoor stadium, Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. Sentimentally, and because of his past with three championships and three divisions, Arguello is a big crowd favorite. Fryer, even his champion, was the underdog in the Miami fight 10 months ago, but he is the decided favorite in this rematch. It's a close bout. Fryer scoring knockdowns in the first and fourth round. And getting a point in the 10-point must here in this eighth round. Go for it, go for it. sort of uh, wildly circling that left hand around. No question, no question. Left hand, he keeps it down low, brings it up, then almost does a 360 rotation and whistles the right hand. But we're in the eighth round, and how much power is left in the four fifths of the two junior welterweights? The heat is tremendous. Maybe they both took a toll from their first meeting. Showboating a little now is Fryer. And the bell for round eight. Let's take a look at the low blow. And there, Arguello repeatedly hitting way below the belt. 
And Richard Steele, as a result of repeatedly hitting low, has taken a point away from the challenger, Arguello. Aaron Pryor and White, the champion, who failed to make the 1976 United States Olympic team, losing twice to Howard Davis, one of the five gold medalists. Very controversial decisions. That was a disappointment after over 200 amateur bouts turned pro in 1976. But Arguello turned pro in 1968, and in watching Alexis fight here in the first eight rounds as we're in round nine, Arguello obviously trained very, very hard for this, as he has said, his last fight. He's been knocked down twice and still gamely trying, but he took a tremendous body punch there, trying to land a left hook to the midsection of Pryor. Pryor getting away with cute tricks, waving that left hand and then sneaking the right hand. Now Pryor's mouth is open. Ninth round. We mentioned at the top that Pryor's condition was suspect. Many thought that he would not make the 140-pound limit, which he did at 7.30, 7.30 a.m. here in Las Vegas today. Arguello at 139. Remember, Arguello was the 126-pound champion, the 130 and the 135. Both junior welterweights warned about using their heads. Last bout, Arguello was around his left eye. No signs of any damage thus far, except the two knockdowns, scored by Pryor and White. Trying for another one right here. Shouting loudly, as you probably can hear, Pryor's cornerman. Manuel Stewart. Jackie Shropshire, William Hardy. Great, step back, step back. Two knockdowns came during the first four rounds. In the first and fourth, when Pryor had a lot more zip, crispness to his punches. But since he's had to expend a lot of energy, he himself has absorbed good lefts and solid rights by Arguello, like right there. But there was another low blow, not seen by the referee. He was on the opposite side. Never happened when a taller man is fighting a shorter man and trying to hook to the body. And here now, headhunting is Pryor, picking up the pace. Round nine. an accumulation of punches that will tell the story if the fight should end early. Neither seemingly able to do it with one punch. Placid expressionless champion Aaron Pryor in white scoring a knockdown in the first and again in the fourth. Between rounds, the man in blue, the challenger, Alexis Arguello, got a head massage and a leg massage. Perhaps that'll perk him up. Get the water. They expended a lot of energy. And again, Pryor, oh, now coming on, landing beautiful combinations, relentless combinations, and backing away. throw 20, perhaps one good one will land. Proved his point just a moment ago. And this is the 10th round. Scheduled for 15. Arguello just cannot get out of the way of the punches. Because he wants to attack on his own. That was the beginning of a beautiful left-right by Arguello. Pryor's handlers now are yelling for Aaron to put Arguello to sleep. Put him to sleep, they shout. And you know Aaron nearly did in the first and fourth rounds. And it's punches like that that could do it. Five solidly landed punches, and there's another one. And against the ropes, Pryor trying and down goes Arguello. Round 10, just too many. He looks absolutely exhausted. Richard Steele right in his ear. This may be the end of a great...
great career, ladies and gentlemen. It is. There was no way a game champion, three-time champion, could get up after taking perhaps there were st 10 straight punches. In the 14th round of their first meeting, maybe 30 similar punches. Fire goes over, gets down on his knees to check if Alexis Arguello is okay, as does Dr. Donald Romeo of the Nevada Athletic Commission. Very closely, and a lot of people should get away, give them some breathing room. The end came at 1.48 of the 10th round. And I guess right from the start, you could say it was really never in doubt, especially when Pryor scored the first and the fourth round knockdowns. Aaron Pryor, who said this fight would be his last, he would then fight for God. Silent in prayer in his corner after victory. And now this is the way it ended. There's a right, a left. Arguello in definite trouble, another left hand. Arguello still trying to fight back, but against the ropes, no room to get away. Tremendous left hook, snapping the head away. That one missed, but this one landed high on the forehead, and Arguello wincing. And then there's the punch, and of course with a little pull, Alex Arguello had everything taken out of him through nine and a third rounds here in the rematch against an unbelievably uncanny champion named Aaron Pryor of Cincinnati. 34 fights, 34 wins, 32 knockouts. And this is how he has done it in the past. Perpetual motion, and after a while, this is the result. And Aaron, still the 140-pound champion. Tremendous effort on your part. Yes, it was one of those do it that fights, and uh, I think it was just one of the greatest fights I've been in my life, and uh, maybe my last fight. I think, you say your last fight? I think it's probably my last fight, unless there's a boom boom fight. Other than that, I think me and Lester knew that going in that we wanted to make this our last fight, and we fought. That's why we fought the fight we did. He won three titles in boxing. He leaves the arena going home with three titles. I'm leaving the ring going on, never been beat in my life. And uh, I think it was just a great fight, and I really thank you for that fight, man. And uh, You're a great champion. And uh, if you if you keep doing boxing, you still uh, ahead to show the people how, how good you are. And take good care of yourself. Thank you, man. I and, do uh, my best. You're a good fighter. Thank you. A good Ale fight. Alexis, coming off the deck twice, we've covered many of your fights. You gave it your very all. Is this your last? Yes. Uh, I swear to God before. And I, I do it right now. I'm throwing my good friend Pryor. I quit. You have no reason to weep. It should be tears of joy, Alexis, because you have been a tremendous champion, as the winner tonight has said to you. And, Aaron, we have to congratulate you. You're a tremendous undefeated 140 okay. pounder. We'll go home to our kids. Good luck to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Alexis. 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 Alexis.